Hey y'all, it's Asterius, and it's been a while since I've recorded anything. Um, I've been gone, and as you can hear, I'm a little sick, but I just really wanted to get this video out, so I decided to just go ahead and film it, even though I sound a little stuffed, um, just so y'all can see. I went up to Drakenfels and Drakenberg Schloss Castle um, with some friends a couple weekends back, and I recorded it all, and I really wanted to put it out there, but I also felt like I wanted to add a little bit of, like, history um, about the castle and everything because it's a really interesting story that goes along with this castle and the castle ruins um, and it's actually the ruins that you can see from my school so when we went up to the top we were able to see my school and the island it's on from the ruins which was really cool um, but yeah so I'm a little sick I just got back from Italy and then immediately got sick I was supposed to go see my family friends um, in Bavaria but Unfortunately, it's not COVID, I got tested, um, but both my roommate and I are not feeling great, so we're staying home and I wanted to get some of this stuff out before I go back into craziness with school and meeting people and everything again. It's getting a lot colder here, so I got my little tea and everything um, because it's freezing and we haven't turned the heaters on yet because we don't want to run up the electricity bill, but um, anyways. That side the fact, I will, videos about Italy are coming out, I promise. I have so much footage. Um, as far as this video goes, there's actually some footage that got corrupted. So if it seems a little bit out of order and there's like not really an ending, that's kind of why for some reason when it got transferred from my GoPro to my computer, it corrupted it and then I lost the files. So I got quite a bit of it, but I missed introducing our two friends that came with us. Um, they're from Ireland and England. Um, they were happy to be part of the video and everything. Actually, one of them um, told a story about the, the Drakenfels a little bit, um, but unfortunately that got cut out as well. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about it. So I'm gonna start where technically we started um, on the hill because it is a big hike. Well, it's not super big. It's just like basically like going up a wall. It's crazy steep. Um, and there's a train that goes up to both the, the castle and the castle ruins, so you don't actually have to do the entire hike yourself if you don't want to. Um, but you start in Konigswinter, which is um, a little town that's like, um, I don't know, a 30 minute tram ride from um, Bonn. Uh, and then you walk up this hill and first you hit the castle and then you hit the castle ruins. So I'll start with Drakenberg Schloss, which is um, the castle. And it's a private villa, it's kind of like, it's, it looks like a Disney castle, if you look at a picture of it. Um, it doesn't look like it should be as young as it is. It's not that old. Um, it was rebuilt, it was built and then rebuilt and then used as um, a lot of different things. So first of all, it was styled as a palace and constructed in like 1882, 1884 um, by this one guy, uh, Baron uh, Sartre. Um, but he actually died before he could even live there. So he was like building it to live there and then didn't end up living it. Um, so then like when the um, his whole, um, everything was like sparsed out to all of his relatives, his nephew ended up um, getting all of the parts for the castle. So he was able to own it and he tried to keep building on it and wanted to make it into like a resort. So he really wanted it to be a tourist attraction um, and he was kind of successful, but he wasn't able to cover the costs of like finishing the build. Um, so he sold it to this guy named Egbert um, who ran it successfully um, and then he was killed in the First World War. So it was acquired by this like businessman and arms dealer who lived in part of the castle while the rest of it was used as like a women's um, convalescent home. And then in 1930, it was sold to the Catholic Order of Christian Brothers, who established like a boarding school for a bit there. And then, of course, you know, the Nazi party took it over and it made it into a um, Adolf, like Hitler school for boys there. Um, and of course, during the war, the Second World War, a lot of it was destroyed. So they just, they didn't actually repair it. Um, after the war was over, um, it became the property of the state of North rhine westphalia um, and which is technically the state that I'm in, but it really confused me because I'm being, I'm working in the state under us, but it, it's so, we're so close to the border, it confused me. Anyways, it doesn't matter. So the, the state actually rented it out to the federal railways as a training facility. Um, and 
Then it was like left empty after that in 1959 and it kind of started to deteriorate a whole lot. And it wasn't until 1960, it wasn't until 1967 um, when they started to restore it. So basically it changed hands a whole bunch of times after this and people were trying to restore it. It gained popularity uh, amongst people as like a tourist destination by people, well, these artists that would paint it and, and sell the paintings, the postcards and that kind of thing. Um, and finally it was administered by the state itself to be finally fully restored. I don't think it was actually fully restored until about 2013 from what I could find. There was a website um, on the uh, DW, which is like the Deutsches, um, the German like news website. We did a lot in classes, um, but it basically was talking about how they were still restoring it in 2011. I couldn't really find when it was finished being restored, but it seems like 2013 was about the time when it was finished. Um, there's now costs like seven euro to go tour it and everything, um, but it is gorgeous and it's really cool. I think because, I mean, I haven't been to a lot of castles yet, um, but because it is so new, much newer, um, and you're able, to, you're able to like explore almost all of it, even all the towers and the spiral staircase and downstairs there's like a weird museum um, about birds. Um, but it was just a really gorgeous, gorgeous hike. I think it's worth it to go inside once. Um, I'm probably going to be going in there a lot with the family members that come to visit me. But um, I feel really, really gorgeous. Um, it's just kind of there. Um, it's used as a tourist attraction, like I said. Uh, there's like a tram that goes up to it. There's not much history of it on that. And then someone who just really wanted a pretty castle to live in. He died before it was built. His nephew took it over. And then it just changed hands a whole bunch. And of course, the Nazis were a part of it at some point because we're in Germany. So it's pretty much it for the castle. But then you go up a little bit further, a lot further, and then you get to Drachenfels. Drachenfels is actually, it kind of means um, Dragon Hill, um, which the Drachenberg is also dragon. And it also comes from the mythology beyond, behind the whole hill. Um, so the hill was actually formed by magma that cooled and kind of whatever it's like really strong um and because of that a lot of pieces from this mountain were actually used to build the um cathedral in cologne so the drachenfels uh the actual castle that used to be before it was ruins um it was built between 1138 and 1167 by an archbishop um and basically it was intended for protection um uh, of the Cologne region from assault from the south because it is like it sits on top of this really big hill and it overlooks pretty much everything beyond it. You can see down the river for a long ways. You can all see all the way into Cologne. You can see the cathedral from it, which is crazy because it's pretty far. Um, but it actually had a whole court, chapel, living quarters for servants, um, and in it stayed basically a whole until 1634 during the Thirty Years' War. The Protestant Swedes were just like, they just fucking wrecked it um, and it was never rebuilt. Um, it like kind of outlived its usefulness as a strategic like outlook. Um, so it just kind of was left to rot. Erosion pulled everything away. Like I said, they started to pull out the rocks um, to build the cathedral in Cologne. Um, so pretty much it just kind of was left to ruins and that's pretty much all that's left now is like this one tower and some of the walls um and you can't actually go inside of the whole ruin that you can see from a distance you can kind of go around it as you'll see in my video um and that's pretty much it the uh, the story behind it is interesting um as far as the, the romanticization romanticism behind it um so basically lord byron um saw it and he was like oh wow gorgeous and made a poem about it which valid if i who see it from like the the boat i take the ferry every morning oh my gosh it's i i could see how poems could be written about it but the legends that surround drachenfels um is siegfried so he is the hero of the i'm gonna butcher this but the nebel <clears throat> nebelugen in lead uh he killed the dragon Fafnir, uh, who lived in a cave near the hill. So I actually thought when I first went up there, I was like, oh, he lived in the castle. No, he just lived in a cave near the hill. Um, and there's like a lot of different legends behind this. There's the one where basically um, there was this dragon, it lived there, and 
a it was gonna kill it killed a lot of people it had all these gold and stuff and then like a maiden held a cross to like protect herself and then it got scared and ran away you never saw the dragon again and there's another story that it was like a dwarf who because of his greediness was transformed into a dragon and he just hoarded gold um and then there's the siegfried legend where he killed the dragon bathed in its blood and became invulnerable uh, either way, there's a dragon, and if you actually go a little bit like in between the Drakenberg and Drakenfels, there is like a um, reptile zoo you can go into with little baby dragons, um, which is really cute. Uh, but yeah, basically there's just there was a dragon in the hills. Someone killed it. Someone got rid of it, and that's why it's called Drakenfels. So I hope you enjoy this little snippet of us walking up to Drakenfels. It's a pretty big hike, like I said. It's really pretty and green, and if you're ever near here, definitely recommend going up there yourself. Good morning, we're in Konigsventer. We're about to go up to Drakenfels. Awesome. We're going to meet up with some people that she met from Ireland and England <laughs> conference that we don't know why Not she was invited to. to. Yeah, obviously, but like we're about to get some coffee first in the street and genuinely it looks like we're in, well, another country because we are, but also, yeah, it's very, very German. <laughs> She's like, why are you filming? <laughs> like, like, tourist. Um, yeah, so we're at Contour and Coffee House and we're going to meet some people.
ghost in the mirror? Oh my god. You can go up that thing. I wanna go up the thing. Oh, I So it's starting to rain. I get the castle behind me, so it's cooler. Um, but that's pretty much all there is for Wackenberg Schloss itself. I think there's a way to get up to the tower, maybe. We might try to find that. Um, but next, we're gonna head to Drachenfels, which is the ruins that I can see from my uh, school every day. Uh, so it should be fun, and you can see literally all the way to Cologne. I don't know if you can see it in this camera because it's not very good quality, but you can see the Cologne Cathedral from here. And then going the other way, I hopefully will be able to see my school from Drachenfels, which would be very nice. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna leave it here for Drachenberg, and I was told I'm not supposed to be filming here, so um, yeah, <laughs> okay. What is the verdict? What do we think? Yeah? Which one's better? <laughs> that one's better? <laughs> the, the ruins are better than the actual castle? Do we agree? <laughs> yeah. 10 out of 10 would hike again. If only I had like a camel or something or a horse to take me up here. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I do need to drink some water. We should probably drink some water when we get to the base here. Okay, I'll check in later when we finally arrive at the bottom. And that was our hike to the Drakenberg and Drakenfels. I am so sorry that the last one cut off. You couldn't even see us finishing the hike and getting back down to the, the bottom of the hill, but we got some beer at a beer garden and sat on the next to the Rhine and then went home. Um, but it was excellent, highly recommend. Um, in the future, I will be posting the videos about Italy and everything like that. Um, but I'm just trying to get better right now and um, prepare for the next week. So hopefully I'll be able to get those out soon. I wanted to make a whole video just about the history, but I figured it'd be better just to put them into, into one. Um, 
but yeah if you enjoyed this video i guess leave a like and uh yeah that's what i'm into this week <laughs>